Hola, my name is Hector Perez Puig. I am a Mexican biologist and I have the privilege of leading the Marine Mammal Program at the Prescott College Kino Bay Center for Cultural and Ecological Studies, based in Valle de Quino, Sonora, Mexico. I am excited to share some interesting insights from our recent research on sperm whales in the Gulf of California. Hi, my name is Dr. Alejandro Arias del Razo. I'm a marine ecologist and I work as a full-time professor at Universidad de las Américas Puebla in Mexico. We conduct a nine-year survey of spring whales in the central portion of the Gulf of California, specifically in the Midriff Island region, which is home of the largest islets in the Gulf, and also it's characterized by its high productivity and biodiversity. By using fluke photographs of the animals, we create a photo identification catalog, and we were able to estimate the population size through the capture-recapture models. Our results show an overall downward trend in the population of sperm whales from a peak of 167 whales in 2010 to 20 in 2014, and from 2015 onwards we didn't find any sperm whales in the region. So we turn our attention towards the main prey, the jumbo squid. We use information from the fishing authorities and we found the same descending trend in the jumbo squid fishing landings which through a general additive model we found it was correlated with the decline and disappearing of spring whales. When the jumbo squid finds difficult conditions, they switch to a small phenotype. They invest less resources into growing to a big size and more resources into reproduction, meaning that they reach a smaller mantle size before reaching sexual maturity. And in this small size, they are not fish. And it seems that the spring whales don't feed on them as well, possibly because they are harder to locate through echolocation. So, a lack of food resources seems to have driven the sperm whales out of the region and even possibly out of the Gulf of California. Historically, phenotypes of jumbo squid have oscillated in response to oceanographic phenomena like El Niño or La Niña, typically switching to a smaller size during El Niño events and reverting to a larger size during La Niña. However, Jumbo squid had remained small since the El Niño of 2014, despite subsequent La Niña events. These prolonged changes has coincided with reports of tropical conditions in the central portion of the Gulf, which usually resemble temperate seas. All of the above seem to be a reflection of a big environmental changes occurring in the sea that was named the Aquarium of the World by the famous explorer Jacques Cousteau. Even the world tropicalization of the Gulf of California has been used by other authors, implying long-term warming of its waters. This decline and the absence of spring whales in the central portion of the Gulf of California is one of more indicators of this type of changes. The ships highlight the importance of long-term data collection and underscore the need for collaborative conservation efforts. Marine mammals play important ecological roles in the ocean. But as top predators, they are also excellent indicators of the well-being of their environment. It's possible that these long-lasting changes that we have been observing in this paper are the result of climate change phenomena, which as we know, have a human cause. In summary, our research highlights significant ecological shifts in the Gulf of California, driven by change in the jumbo squid population and their impact on spray whales. This finding underscores the interconnectedness of marine ecosystems and the profound effects of climate change. As we continue this, to study these changes, it is crucial to advocate for conservation efforts, inspire further research and action in marine mammal conservation.